Okay, yeah, we are live now. Uh, so hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks a lot for joining in today. Uh, so this is the third session of ADP List and Lodifiles original series, where we help you learn motion design by integrating Lodifiles with different softwares. So we had the initial sessions on how do we integrate Lodifiles and Figma, the second one being Lodifiles and Canva. And today we have with us Diego with us, and we have Diego with us, who will be helping integrate and show how we can use Lodifiles in sync with Webflow. So this is a multi-part series, and we keep on bringing up new sessions for you every other week. So for this one, as I said, we have Diego with us. And if you have been a part of uh, Webflow content, following content religiously, so you would already know Diego. In case not, so here is a short intro about him. Diego is a brand designer and Webflow developer, helping clients around the world creating more engaging experiences through design, motion, and Webflow. He has more than 10 years of experience of uh, front-end and design experiences. He specializes in storytelling using skills like branding, design, and motion. And uh, Diego was also a part of our Webflow series that we did last year. And uh, I am a big fan of his. I'm, I would say uh, the same words are something that Yamin would also highly agree to. So I'm really excited for this session, just like all of you, passing on to Diego, and let's get started. All right, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Welcome to my presentation here about Lottie Files for Webflow. I'm going to share my screen because like, I'm going to show like good stuff here, so let's get started. All right, can can you guys see my screen? All yes, good. Sir. Okay, so thanks for joining uh, to, to my Lottie Files for Webflow presentation. And before we dive into like what is the integration is about, I always like to like define things first. So first things first, let me just move here and take this out of the screen. So yeah, what is Lottie? Well, probably all of you guys here already know what's Lottie, but it's always good to recap, right? So Lottie Files is a type of file format that you can use to create complex animations for the web. So you can create like vector-based animations, you can use images and image sequences to create animations and et cetera. And Lottie Files has integration with several softwares, both to create a Lottie file and also to actually use a Lottie file. So you can create Lottie files with like Figma using the Figma to Lottie files plugin. You can use uh, After Effects. Previously we had the body moving plugin. Now Lottie files has an official plugin for After Effects as well. And you can use Lottie files in other, other places like Canva, for example, and Webflow. And for me, the ability to create a Lottie file and to use Lottie file for web is actually what made me like take the, the whole thing about creating web experiences to the next level, especially with Webflow. And since we're talking about Webflow, what is Webflow? Webflow is a, a no-code visual builder that creates advanced and stunning websites. So you have like granular control over what your website looks and how it behaves, like what is the structure, et cetera. And that's why, why Webflow is good. And and Webflow has like a built-in interactions feature that is for me the bread and butter of Webflow. And this is like exactly what made me switch from what I was using before to like just use Webflow. I'm only using Webflow today, especially because of the interactions feature. And that's what where things get interesting. That's where the worlds collide, the Lottie files and Webflow. And the integration between Lottie files and Webflow is very good. First, because you can basically, once you have a Lottie file, you can just like drag and drop your Lottie file into the web assets panel on Webflow. And once you have your Lottie file there, you can just take the Lottie file from the assets panel and drop into your canvas uh, on, on Webflow and done. You ha already have uh, animation, a complex animation working. If you like load the page, you will see like the Lottie file files playing, you can play on a loop, etc. So it's really easy to start using Lottie files with Webflow. You don't have to touch a single line of code. You don't have to use like the Lottie JavaScript library to play the Lottie files, for example. All I have to do is drag and drop. Very easy. 
But things get more interesting when you start using interactions. So you can use any supported interactions in Webflow to play a lot of timeline because what is basically uh, an animation with a timeline, right? So you can use the interactions feature in Webflow to actually play that Lottie file. And it's very easy because you can just like have a few like keyframes on the timeline on the interaction Webflow. And you can just define the position or the frame you want to see from your Lottie animation for those specific keyframes. So it's very easy to use and you can create like pretty interesting uh, animations with that combo. Now, Let's stop talking and let's actually start doing. So I have two demos to show you today about how you can create a lot of animation and use in Webflow. And we're going to start with this one, which is basically a vector-based animation where I create the animation Figma, and then I export it to the Lottie Files plugin, and then we just download that, upload to Webflow, and use scroll-based interactions, which is like my favorite type of interaction to play this Lottie animation, okay? So let me just get out of the of this, and then let's take a look at Figma. So this is like the Figma file, and this is my animation that I created for this example. It's fairly simple. Uh, we have like a collection of frames here, and each frame has like a, uh, some progress here on an animation. All my elements are on all frames. All of them has the same names. That's very important when you use, for example, Smart Animate, which is what we use here to create this animation and be able to export uh, with the Lottie Files plugin. And then I just connected all the frames using prototype features on Figma. And it's very easy. I'm just using after the late trigger with one millisecond because I just want the animation to play all those keyframes using Smart Animate. So everything will automatically animate itself if you have everything properly named, right? And I'm not worrying about the easing between the frames because we're going to use this on a scroll-based interaction. So this scroll animation will dictate the easing. So we don't have to worry about that. That's why I'm using linear uh, uh, easing here. And just adding like a small time interval between the frames so we can actually see things happening, okay? So yeah, I just created this prototype in here and let's preview the final result of this animation. So this is what we're going to see here. Let's play it once more. That's why I want to export as a Lottie file so I can import into Webflow, okay? Now, once I have already my prototype connected properly with Smart Animate and etc., then I can just open the Lottie Files plugin. Okay, have it here. They can export a Lottie. I can just like select a few keyframes, or I can basically just select a prototype if I have someone. So I have some. I do have a prototype here. So if I click here, Lottie to Webflow, it'll take a couple seconds. And there it is. So that's the animation I want to see uh, turned into a Lottie file so that we can use in Webflow. So all I have to do now is click here, save to workspace to insert. And once I click this, this animation will be uploaded to my Lottie Files dashboard. So if I go here to my Lottie Files dashboard, so this is how the dashboard looks like, and the animation is right here. So I click here. So great, this is the animation. Perfect, ready to be downloaded and used on Webflow. And for me, one of the best things about Lottie Files is definitely the compression, the automatic compression feature. So you can see here that the original file size for this animation is like more than half a megabyte, uh, which is like, it's not that bad, but it could be better, right? And then you have several options to download this animation with a more compressed file format. So for example, you have the optimized Lottie JSON, which is not that different, but the magic happens when you move from JSON to dot .lottie. And you can see here that the final result of, as a file format for the optimized Lottie is like 10 times smaller than the original Lottie JSON. So this is great. This is a great uh, uh, file size. And Webflow is great because it supports both JSON and .Lottie files. So we can definitely use the optimized version of this animation on Webflow. So all, all I had to do is download the animation here. And then here's Webflow. 
And then I just uploaded my Lottie file here. So dot Lotties are uh, an exception. Like if you have like JSON file, you can just drag and drop it here, like I said. But dot Lotties, you can't drag and drop here, but you can just click on this button. Then you can select your dot Lottie file and it will upload it, will upload the, the, the animation right here. So I can see like my mouse over that it's already working here. And to make this work, I could just like simply drag this and drop into the page. But I want this animation to play as you scroll through some sections. So let's take a look at the structure of my uh, my page here on Webflow. So have the first section here, which is basically just this. And then after this section, we'll have three more sections here. One, two, three. And I want my animation to play between these as I scroll between these three sections that we see here, right? So I have here uh, an element animation wrapper, and this is containing all the three sections and have position relative to make sure that the animation, the Lottie file, will always stay in the middle of the screen as I scroll between those sections. So I have another element here called sticky wrapper. This is like a full screen uh, element that uh, that contains the Lottie file right here. So it's right here, my Lottie file. So since it's like position sticky, it will always stay sticky or fixed on the screen once we have, once we're scrolling inside the animation wrapper element. And and um, and since we have like negative negative 100 VH, that means that it's not taking any screen size. It's actually behind all the three sections that we have here, but it still uh, behaves with position sticky the way we want, okay? So yeah, we have the Lottie animation already on the canvas here in Webflow. Uh, and if I go here to settings, I can preview my animation. It's already working. So like, if I just leave it as it is, it will work. I can click here and it will play on a loop if I want. I want to keep it like this, but like I said, I want this to work with a scroll-based animation. I want to play the progress of this animation as I scroll between sections. So have those three sections right here. And we can see this little icon that means that this section is a trigger for a interaction. So if I go to the interactions panel on Webflow, I see here that I have a while scrolling in view. That's the, the, the type of interaction that you use on Webflow to like have an interaction that plays during the progress of your scrolling inside the, the trigger. And if I click here, uh, we can see that I have like three different uh, animations, Lottie 1, Lottie 2, Lottie 3. So each one of these is attached to each one of those sections. So the first section has Lottie 1. And like I said, it's very easy, very simple to, to use. I just have to like to click on the Lottie animation element, click here, and add Lottie. That's Add, this adds a keyframe on the, the timeline here for the Lottie file. I already have that here. So basically, I just want to start the scrolling animation at 0%. So this is like defining the progress of your animation. Like what is the, the keyframe you want to see when you start scrolling here? So I just define it at 0% of the scrolling on the, on the, the section to be at 0, obviously. And then when it hits like half of the the section scroll, then it will play to like, let's say a third of the, the animation. And if I turn the live preview on, I can already see this working. So if I start scrolling here, I see my Lottie file playing from zero to like a third of the animation. Very easy to use, right? Now, if we go to the next section and directions, I have Lottie 2. And now what I'm doing is I'm continuing the timeline here, continuing the progress of the Lottie file. So the, the final uh, uh, keyframe on the previous section for the Lottie file is actually the first one here on the second scroll interaction. So like starting at a third of the animation, now we move to like almost the end of the animation because once we scroll on the second section, this one, I want to start uh, showing, displaying this like this, uh, this mock-up of the Lottie Files plugin on Figma. Okay, and again, if I turn my live preview on, I can see like it starts 
there, and then it plays into this keyframe, okay? And the same thing for the last section. So again, starting on the same spot as, as we finished on the previous uh, animation, and then just playing everything into like 100% or the last frame animation. So yeah, like it's really, really, really easy to upload a Lottie file here and control with interactions and Webflow. All you have to do is select the Lottie file, add a keyframe to your timeline, and then like uh, define the point of the animation timeline you want to see the, the, the Lottie animation. Now let's take a look at the end result. So this is my page. It's already published. And once I start scrolling, then I see like the Lottie file playing here as I scroll into the section. Then I continue scrolling. I can see like it's keep it keeps playing and then goes into the end. If I scroll back, it just reverses everything. Cool, right? And very easy to implement. I love doing things like that with my uh, other projects in Webflow. Now let's get fancier here. Let's do something better. It's better like it's it's cool. Vector based interactions is cool, but I like to use Lottie files as well to create something that is not easy to create if you don't have a lot of experience, which is like a 3D animation. You can create 3D animations using Lottie files. There's like a, a couple things you can do for that. And the way we do that, this is my second example. You can see this. This looks like an image, but it's not. It's a Lottie file. The way you do this is you can create an animation on your soft 3D software of choice. My example, I use Blender all the time. And you can render your animation as an image sequence. So a sequence of e images, like each image is a keyframe on your animation. And then you can take all those uh, images, uh, Im uh, image sequence, and then turn it into a Lottie file. So for example, I have like, in this folder, I have like a sequence of 40 frames that I render on Blender. These images are optimized. So I, I drop these images here on, on Figma. <clears throat> so I have all the images right here. And I use a plugin called Tinyfy to compress those images, like because the each one of these frames were like uh, almost half a megabyte. So I not, had to drop down the file size. And this is really important when creating image sequences to generate a Lottie file. Try to keep the, the image size, the size that you're going to use, like you don't have to render this on a huge resolution and try to optimize and compress your images on the image sequence as much as you can. Lottie files will complex, compress this even more for you, but like I always compress things before everything. Because if we select all the images, the final file size is like more than uh, one and a half megabyte, which is not that bad, but it could be definitely better, right? And then how do we turn this into a Lottie file? The thing with the Figma to Lottie files plugin is that it supports some, some things, but other things are not supported right now. For example, to turn this into a Lottie file, I would have to like connect all of these frames uh, and use like the instant uh, uh, change between uh, frames that we use on, on Figma. So for example, if I click here, go to prototype, I click here, I'm using Smart Animate. I need like instant, I need an instant change between keyframes to make this work. But that's not possible yet with the Lottie Files plugin. But if you go to your Lottie Files dashboard and click here on new, upload animation, so usually when you have a Lottie file and you want to upload to the, your Lottie files dashboard so you can do more stuff or compress or whatever, that's the user interface you use to upload a, a .json or .lottie file right here, right? But if you notice this banner here, it says convert video and image sequence to Lottie. If you can click here, now you can upload a video or you can upload a zip file containing all of your images, the image sequence, you can just drop it here, and the Lottie Files website will automatically generate a Lottie file for you based on that image sequence. So that's what I did here. I just uh, turned all of these into a zip file, and then I just dropped the zip file right here, and then Lottie Files generated for me this. 
So this is the 3D animation. The image sequence turned into an animation using Lottie files. And we can see here that the Lottie JSON file is not that bad. It's a little bit more than half a megabyte. And the optimized Lottie file is smaller. It compressed even more for me. So like it's less than half a megabyte, which is it's great for an uh, animation like this using an image sequence. Like using images on Lottie files is always like heavier because it's actually an image. We're just rendering a collection of images, right? But from one and a half megabyte to like less than a half megabyte, that's a lot of optimization, right? And then here on Webflow, we have like a similar structure. We have the animation wrapper that contains like the elements and the sections. We have the CQ wrapper, uh, and we have our Lottie file right here, Lottie 3D. So that's the Lottie file. And if I scroll, it stays CQ on the screen. And then I created, I attached to the animation wrapper an interaction, again, a scrolling interaction called Lottie 3D. And it's the same principle. You just create like two keyframes. And then I'm playing this Lottie animation from zero to not 100%. It's 99.99%. So sometimes when you generate Lottie files, it really depends on what are you using to generate the Lottie file, like for After Effects, for example. Uh, sometimes, like when you play like to 100% on Webflow, like it just showed an empty keyframe. So if that happens to you, don't panic. All you have to do is use a number really close to 100%. In that case, I just use 99.99%, and it works. Okay. And, and that's it. So let's take a look at the final result. Just open the page here. So this is the page. This is my Lottie file. And as I start scrolling, it plays the Lottie animation, like the, the icon rotating as I scroll. How cool is that? This is really cool, right? And I love using this. I use this all the time, either playing the Lottie image sequence as a with a scroll-based interaction or with mouse movement or like just playing on the loop. It works really well. You have like a high quality image here, a 3D image that has transparency. It's not like a video and it behaves the way you want to behave. Like it's not like a video that needs to be played. Uh, um, you can use like any type of interaction with Webflow to actually play the live file, right? So that's it. And, and then my, my final recap here, a lot of files in Webflow, for me, it's a match made in heaven because with Webflow can create like um, very creative and, and, and like crazy animations and interactions for your page, but has a limit. And then when you, once you add a lot of files to the mix, it just takes everything to a whole new level. Like you have a whole new level of like possibilities using a lot of files in Webflow. And you can use and then you can experiment with different types of events and interactions with Webflow. You can use, like I said, scroll-based interactions. You can use mouse movement. You can play things on the loop. It's very flexible. And you don't have to touch a single line of code to actually do that kind of stuff. And obviously, the .lottie file format is always the best one for performance because it's always the, the one that is more optimized. And Webflow supports that file format out of the box. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for coming. Hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, bring it on. Thanks a lot, Diego. This was a wonderful session. And as you said, in case if you have any questions, feel free to drop it up in the chat or raise your hand and we'll start taking up your questions now. Okay, we have the first one from Isaac, and the question is, how do you work around limitations with lot of files like gradients? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. Like, do you have any examples you want to show so I can tell how I would do something like that? I know that a lot of files, it doesn't support all of this stuff uh, out of the box. So like, whenever I found a limitation like that, I either go with, um, for an image, for example, you could use an image instead of like a, 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 a real gradient. So it's the same principle as this image sequence right here. It's a collection of images and you can do whatever you want here, right? That's how I 
usually approach things that can't be done with vector-based uh, uh, elements with Lottie files. Thanks, Diego. Uh, I hope, Isaac, that answers your question. Anyone else would like to ask anything from Diego? OK, we have a follow-up to that. Uh, when is using Lottie 3D sequence better than better over integrating a spline one? Yeah, that's a good question as well. So yes, Spline and Webflow, they have an integration as well now. So you can use uh, Spline 3D scene and you can animate in Webflow, which is awesome. I've been playing with that all the time as well. But 3D for web has like some limitations. And for me, the, the biggest limitation right now is like the quality of the image uh, of the animation itself. So you can't create a, a, a scene on Spline and it can look good, but Nothing compares to like uh, uh, actual uh, scene render on a 3D software, with like Blender, for example, where you can add like realistic lights and shadows, like and the the animation quality is like on a whole new level. You can try to achieve that with Spline, but the more you do that, the more you add lights and shadows and layers of uh, of materials for your objects, the heavier your scene will get. And that would take like can take like several seconds to load. The experience of your website can look janky, especially on mobile. So it's all it's usually about performance. If you use a lot of files in an image sequence to generate like this animation, it doesn't matter. Like your you you can have like a video. You don't need to have like a three D scene. You can turn a video into image sequence and use lot of files to like create this animation and play with Webflow using like scroll interaction or mouse movement, it doesn't really matter. So if you need like high quality animations, high quality visual animations, usually uh, using a Lottie file with Webflow is probably better. For example, I created uh, a couple websites in the past uh, that like product based uh, uh, websites. So uh, we need really need to show like the product like rotating and showing like parts of the product and the animation was like a video and it's a high quality video 3d animation it's like very realistic and doing that with spline wouldn't be really possible uh it could be possible but like the performance would be bad so like just either using a lot of file or other approaches to like playing an image sequence or playing a video that's the approach that it's required for that kind of stuff so like a lot of files you can have that you can have transparency like we have right here so you're not like limited to like just rendering a video. You can just render an image sequence with transparency like this and then play. So that's usually what I, I, what I think about like either using Spline or using Lottie. OK, thank you, Diego. Uh, yeah, anyone else would like to ask anything? Okay, we have the next one from Kevin. The question being, can Lottie files also be used for Wix and Framer? Yes, Kevin, uh, that's correct. And actually, the next session is on using Lottie files and Wix, and the next to next is going to be on Framer. So we have the Wix one live. So in case if you are a Wix user, do RSVP on this one, and you would be learning more about how do you integrate Lottie files and Wix. Okay, do we have another one? Otherwise, we will be calling this one off and yeah. Okay, I guess that was the last one. Uh, so thanks again, Diego. Thanks a lot for joining us today. And it's always a pleasure learning from you. You make things so easy to understand. And thanks for the recap about the lot of animation as such as well. Thanks a lot for that. Thank you, everyone, for joining in today. And uh, we keep on bringing up the sessions every other week. As I said, the next session is going to be on Wix because we do know a couple of our learners are Wix and Framework enthusiasts. So we are bringing up sessions on Wix and Framework as well. 
the wix session is live now i've shared the link in the chat feel free to rsvp on that and you'll be learning about lottery files and wix in the next session thanks again and have a great rest of the week see you around